Having like knee supports on. <laughs> Gotta keep everything connected and in place, right? <laughs> Here we go. Wow. Essentially strict pressing that, that first rep. No Patterson. problem. Looking strong. He's making this look easy. Everyone else struggling big time. Patterson closing in on double figures. I bet you Patterson has a big bench press <laughs> or, or a big shoulder press. I mean, those reps looked like minimal leg drive and yeah. maximal shoulder drive. Look at the chest on him. You can see as he turns to face us. He's definitely a big bench presser. He, he is a carnivore of a man. Look at that. Wow. No legs. Double Just figures. Double figures with all arms. I don't believe anyone else has managed a rep. And there we have Patson on 10. 11. Very, very solid performance there from Eric Patterson. Finishes on 12 repetitions. That's going to be a target to beat. That is. That is. And, I mean, to do it with, without the use of the legs, that, yeah. that's really uh, marking one's territory, if you will. All right, our second heat of men's over 50. Guile Sharp of Canada in lane one. Dennis Troll of USA in lane two. Eric Schmidt of USA in lane three. And Andrew Burwell of Canada in lane four. North America on the field, Canada and USA. Sharp getting loose right there in lane one. Getting those <laughs> squats in, making sure every, all those joints are lubed up and ready to go. I think there's just some adjustments being made to one of the Viking press equipment. They're just not quite secure, so that we are waiting for that to be adjusted. There right. we go. Thumbs up. Sharp, Troll, Schmidt, and Burwell. Burwell, another athlete with some very strong shoulders. He is using a bit of leg drive, but you can just see that shoulder power really take over. Troll in lane number two, very little leg drive, just a little bit of extension through the ankles and then relying on shoulders and tries to be fighting hard. Can't quite lock out that fourth rep, fifth rep, sixth rep, excuse me. It's hard he to he keep really up. had to hold it there to get that down command. Yeah. A lot of these older athletes, they can't quite fully extend the lockouts. They've had to show the referees how far they can extend to beforehand. And ultimately what those refs are looking for is established control overhead. Even if there is a limitation with the athlete, if they can show that they have it controlled as far to lockout as possible, usually they will get that down command if they got to talk to the ref before. It's actually harder to hold it not locked out. <laughs> right. You've got, you've got muscles under constant tension versus having those bones stacked up right on yeah. top of each other. But Burwell walks away in first place from that heat with seven reps, falling five reps short of matching Patterson's 12, but a very respectable number to get on the board. Yeah, this is good. Right, heat number three. Thomas Coate of the USA in lane one. Lee Woody of USA in lane two. Mark Bevins in lane three. And Woody Wood of USA in lane four. A USA-dominated field. No, 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 we've mentioned it. Yeah. Darren Sadler. So Darren Sadler was just coming over to explain to us what we'd already mentioned about how um, with the over 50s, a number of them just physically cannot fully lock out. So the, the athletes have to show that to the referees. They've had to sh prove where they fully extend to. And then once they hit that position and they hold it under control, then they get the down signal. And even then, this is not something that's just exclusive to the over 50s. But I will say with the older individual, you tend to have a bit more mileage on the body. But even when I compete, when you compete, the refs will tell us in the rules meeting, if you have a problem locking out, let us know. Show us and we'll accommodate you as best we can with your down commands. Thomas Coat in lane number one struggling here. He's one of my athletes and this is a huge achievement for him just to be here. Very, very small compared to some of the others. Pressing is not his strength. If you like, he's done well just to be here. 
And the fact that someone like that can compete with the likes of Nick Best and Mark Felix, it's a big, you know, personal achievement for him. That's what I got. You got to tell all the athletes here to really take confidence and a sense of belonging and knowing that you made it here to this stage. You are in the Just midst getting of the world's strongest. Huge. Very impressive. There is a lot of prestige here. So we've got Woody on six reps. And I think Bevin's managed one. Maybe, maybe. I'm still seeing zeros on that board, but we'll have to get well, a... I think the referees are just really quick at the resets. They, they are. There we go. As always, we will bring official results to you when we have them. Our fourth heat, Steve Islas of the USA in lane one, Andy Clark of England in lane two, Mark Galloway of USA in lane three, and Sean Brooks of USA in lane four. Andy Clark, a very solid Masters athlete but he does not like the overhead events. He's got issues with his shoulder, really can't raise his right arm too far at all. And you know, shoulder issues are very common in, in the sport especially. The shoulder is the most flexible joint in the body, and sometimes the price to pay with such flexibility is leaving it a little bit easy to injure at it's times. It's one of the most complicated. With so many muscles that attach to the shoulder, it's very, very easy to get it's shoulder a, issues. A very dense and compressed highway of many joining muscles and ligaments the lats, and tendons. The the bicep, the tricep, the pec, everything is kind of attaching in that same area. Clark. Clark managing to get a couple of reps, so this is good. Two reps. Brooks, Brooks having managed one. Really hold that and show his judge he's got established control. Four repetitions for Clark. I think he's going to be pleased with that. Islas trying his best. You see the, the calves, the tiptoe action, really trying to give him that last little bit of range of motion. But I'm loving the Hulkamania socks that he's got on as well. Oh, I just noticed those. I love it. I wonder if they're giving him some extra power. I think he can credit two of those reps to a little bit of excessive strength gained from the Hulkamania. Way to go, brother. All right. Our fifth heat. This is the one we were talking about. This is Chad Coy, heat. USA in lane one. Brad Curl of Australia in lane two. Mark Felix of England in lane three. And Nick Best of the USA in lane four. Of three potential winners of this competition all in the same heat. Nick Best walking to the field, ready to rock and roll. So the really interesting thing when it comes to Nick and Felix is in the open weight class competitions, they often can one rep or zero an overhead. The weights are a little bit lighter. I can't see them zeroing this. So it's about how many points they can kind of accumulate. If they can get themselves in the top 10, top five positions on a weak event like this, it's bad news for everyone else. I 100% agree. We got to see Chad Coy walk up to his judge right there and show him what his lockout looks like. So he, he knows he's got some shoulder arm lockout issues that he wants to make sure they are both on the same page. When you're going against the likes of Felix and Best, you are vying for points. Koi, Coral, Felix, and Best. Everyone gets a good rep there, I think, except for Coral. Felix looking solid here with four. Chad Koi gets his fourth as well. And this is good for Mark Felix. If he can stay ahead, Felix. Chad and Nick. The, tall, the tallest of the athletes here on this heat. And I believe the oldest as well. Yeah. I mean, Mark Felix truly is a miracle man. He is. It, it's such a pleasure getting to compete with him. Every opportunity I have. I He's such a pleasant person as well he to is. be around. There's no ego with Mark. Just works hard and still managing to works prove hard, he's a world-class athlete. Let's his actions do the talking and claims world records <laughs> whenever he can. And I tell you what, seven reps there for Mark. That's very Three. solid for him on a Viking press. Chad, six reps. Second, right behind Mark. Nick Best with four reps. Chad was with six. 
Eric Patterson still untouchable with 12 repetitions. And need I remind the viewers and listeners, he did not use his legs. <laughs> there was some strict pressing action. When you get to this level, you don't need legs. You know, it's less moving parts, right? You just, <laughs> if you got strong arms, let them do the work. And Patterson had just that. Our final heat of our men's over 50, David Johns, lane one, Joey Grape in lane two, George Pearson in lane three, and Dennis Long in lane four, and I all USA athletes. I remember Joey from last year. He was a real character. Oh, he's such a pleasant guy to watch. He's <laughs> so, so much fun just being around and watching him operate. Dennis Long, a real competitor. Dennis Long is a powerhouse. But he, I did get to talk with him prior to the event. He is actually competing with a torn hamstring. Wow. He uh, does not have a surgery scheduled until after the competition is over. Great. So. is looking solid here. Five reps already. Pearson also going well with six. six. Pearson just ties Felix. Now moves on to his eight if he can get it. Couldn't just quite get that one. And Grape is now charging up eight repetitions. He has now surpassed Felix. He is currently in second place with that, I believe, unofficially. Good battle here by Grape and Parsons. Nine repetitions. Does Parsons have anything left? He's leaving it at seven. Ten I think seconds. Three, two, one. He's trying. Oh, good solid performance there by Joey Grape. And he's happy. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. He, he is such a, a joy to watch compete. He has so much fun. That concludes our men's over 50 category. We will be getting a weight change as we move on to our men's under 90 class. We will be going from 265 pounds to 295 pounds, or 134 kilos. And I believe we might be getting some scores up on the board soon. Okay, and here are the scores for our men's over 50. Eric Patterson in first place with 12 reps. Joey Grape, nine reps, second place, and then a three-way tie for third between Andrew Burwell, Mark Felix, and George Pearson with seven repetitions. Lee Woody and Chad Coy tie with six reps. Dennis Troll with five. Andy Clark and Nick Best tie with four. And I think that's the perfect result for Mark Felix there. He'll be very pleased with that first event. I think so as well. We have seven athletes failing to get a rep, which means Mark Bevins and Sean Brooks with their one rep do get some good points on the board from that effort. But, well, Patterson was just untouchable. <laughs> yeah, first man out, and he absolutely smashed it. You know, I am always curious to see how the athletes with that dominant shoulder power do fare on the rest of the events. And all too often we see strongman competitions starting with the shoulder event, you know, paying a little, a little tip to the athletes who do have the strong shoulders, maybe not the strongest deadlift, but, you know, there, there are athletes out there, although they are a, uh, a very rare sight, there are athletes out there who do have strong shoulders and strong deadlifts, the best of all worlds, but... This is, yeah. the, this is the pace setter for the rest of the day. Well, and it's nice if you are good at just one particular event. You do want to show off and show what you're capable of. So it's always nice to prove you're the best at something. And I will say starting off with an event that you are the best at really plays a big role in having a foothold secured in terms of confidence for what else is to come. Yeah. And versus when you start off with an event that maybe isn't your best. And that can also that can kind of play a bit of a of a role here. Confidence a is a huge thing as an athlete. You know, if you can kind of roll into the next event and you feel confident, you feel that you're performing well, and you also get the advantage of going later on the next event. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. You know, you can watch everyone else, and then it gives you that target to beat. Whereas if you're out first early on the next event, or you know, I think the third event we've got today is a deadlift. Is someone like Mark Felix or someone like yourself? If you got to go later, you know you can save energy because you know you're a great deadlifter. You've got that confidence, and if you don't... We have moved up in weight for our men's over 50. 310 pounds, 140.5 kilos in each hand. A 620-pound deadlift off the ground 
and then you got to move with it. Brian Strickland. Strickland. Gets some distance, got but it flies from it his It looked hand. like he was moving really well. Sowards, he fought to get that lift up, but you can just see the immense load pulling him each side with every step. Not quite getting the balance on the top. Need to, he needs to bring those feet nice and narrow. There we go. He brought them in. He was able to take a few steps. He's a tall guy. That's such a long way up. Such a long oh, way up. That. He also has a knee brace. So he's working with some sort of injury. Which is impressive. That is what it... Gosh, the work ethic on this guy. He kept trying and trying. Very respectable finish mm -hmm. from Strickland there in lane one. Brian representing the USA. 310 pounds per hand. That is uh, my current body weight. Over, Each of these guys over are carrying. 50 years old and still moving big weights. I want to be like them when I'm over 50. It's something to aspire to. Yeah. 100%. Heat number two steps to the arena. Eric Schmidt, lane one. Thomas Cote, lane two. Woody Wood, lane three. Mark Galloway, lane four. All USA athletes. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a Thomas Cote fan right now because that hat is styling. I, I noticed uh, I it on know the Viking what press. What this guy's background is, but he's got the vibes, and that's what I'm here for. Is he our smallest? I, I, I use that word carefully, but. Compared to these other guys, I'm curious to see how he fares against such big handles because pound for pound compared to body weight, this is going to be an impressive feat of strength. Getting him up and then moving down the course. But his hat is matching his belt. He's got the color coordination going on there. Come on, coach. Show us what you got. Impress the world. Move those farmers. Oh, he's marching, he's marching. He's just got to get it over that starting line. Yes, and he goes. Oh, my God. Yes, let's go, Coat. Wow. Oh. Even that distance, man. With 310 <laughs> pounds per hand. At over Incredible. 50 years old. These, these other men are huge compared to this guy, and he's still moving it. Look at that. Mark Galloway currently with the greatest distance. It's about halfway on the course. Haven't had a single competitor finish it quite yet. It is a difficult weight to be able to hold in 310 pounds per hand. I think Coates is calling it there. But even the distance that he got, just phenomenal. He's getting points on the board. That's some big weight, man. Really big weight. I think old man grip strength is a real thing. We're seeing that here right now. <laughs> it's a lot of practice. It, is, it has to be earned over many years of hard work. I bet you Coat is a carpenter. That's that's my my guess. Or a mechanic. We're, we're going to have to find out. I got to find out. I, I, I need to go give him an interview after this. Those, those hands definitely do some work. It, it really shows right there. All right. Our third heat steps into the arena. Brad Curl of Australia in lane one. David Johns in lane two, USA. Dennis Long, lane three, USA. Mark Vevins, lane four, USA. This is uh, Australia or USA ganging up on Australia. Yeah, I guess so. Now Dennis Long, I, I got to talk to him before the competition started. He is competing with a torn hamstring. Ouch. He does not have He's surgery still... scheduled until after the and contest he's still is over. Pushing through this. Mm -hmm. That's a beast. That is a beast of a man. <laughs> Heats two through four, moving down the course well. This is absolutely incredible. All of the Americans going the distance with 310 per hand. We've got Bevins with a torn hamstring moving. Uh, Dennis Long. Dennis, Dennis Long. Long is, okay. Yeah, and he's moving boy. it. He's moving it. 
That's incredible. Curl's got something going on in his leg as well. See that brace? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> that is That's neat. currently he's in first place. Then this goes down. I think I think he went down just because his, he gave it his all. I don't think we have to worry about him, but he looks happy. He does. He is the, the first athlete to finish in this weight class. I'm wondering if Lane Ford wound up getting it. Oh, so close. I hope he got it. <laughs> to be the first to finish in this weight category of athletes with the torn hamstring, that says something. I, I'm, and to have a, such a tear that he's going to need to go under the knife. So, yeah, that's yeah. serious, and he's still killed it. I believe Dennis is a helicopter pilot, and he works with the armed forces. So he's a special kind of tough. Yeah, you know, it's a special it shows kind here. Of tough. But uh, here we have Sean Brooks this, in lane one of our heat number four. Steve Islas in lane number two. Both gentlemen representing USA. Andy Clark in lane three representing England. And Nick Best. Nick Best. Oh, this is representing Nick Best USA. Is the guy to watch. Um, when I was uh, an amateur getting into the sport, Nick Best was the person I looked up to. For uh, my farmers' carries, the yokes. I mean, this guy uh, has been the world's strongest man in finalist multiple times. Does he even play six in the world's strongest man? Uh, he's been a mentor to me. I think he's going to blast off with this and just absolutely demolish the field. You know, I can agree 100% with there everything you just said from mentorship to it's inspiration. And it shows right here just sprinting, long strides, stability. He still got it. Over 50 years old and making 310 per hand. An absolute joke. Oh Way to go, gosh. Nick. Yes. I wonder where that stacks up with Tommy's time. That's up there. That's legendary. Nick Best, still the best. And it was not too long ago that Nick had tore his lat. And he had to get surgery for that to have That's it right. repaired. And, and not too long ago, he also dropped a bench press on his chest. Right. That, that was more recent. That's very recent. But he is very clearly in tip-top shape. He is and also well. another kind of tough. And these last two gentlemen, Brooks and Islas, giving it their all to get every bit of distance. Nick Best, 16.44 seconds. Not quite as fast as Tommy Lavelle, but, you know, we did add a whole other 20 pounds in each end here. And uh, Nick has a little bit of extra body weight to lug around, too. So, yeah. look at that. But yeah. And age. 16. <laughs> and age. It's been around. 16.4 seconds with 310 per hand. Incredible. Oh, yeah. right, here we have our next heat. Dennis Troll in lane one, USA. Lee Woody, lane two, USA. Chad Coy, lane three, USA. And Andrew Burwell of Canada in lane number four. This is an event where mobility plays a huge factor here. And more often than not, with the Masters divisions, both 40 and 50 plus, you know, we're, we're talking about athletes that you know, realistic, realistically speaking, there is a lot of mileage on the body. There sometimes is a long rap sheet of injuries involved. Who has the best mobility? Who can operate well with strength and power? I mean, these are the guys that finished the best at the Viking Press. So It really comes down to how well you also manage injuries. Like One thing is to be strong, but ultimately the healthiest and strongest will win. Yeah. If you're prone to injury, it doesn't matter how strong you are. So there is an absolute art in taking care of your body. Troll just blasting off, nice and steady. Closely Beautiful followed pace. by Woody and Coy. Mm -hmm. Troll is there first. Quick on that transition. Interesting ch technique by Chad. Oh, gripping the front. He lost the grip there by Troll. Woody almost catches up, but Troll gets the uh, start again. Oh, 
just right into the finish. Troll drops it. It's amazing that he can keep repicking and getting that distance with his grip giving. Coy and Woody still fighting for those last inches they can get for whatever distance. Three, two, one. Now we notice with both Woody, or with both Troll and Coy, these guys were not gripping directly down the center. Where do you stand with that technique? Um, I actually like to switch it up sometimes, depending on how long the implements are. If, if, if it's a really long farmer's, I prefer to hold right in the center. But if they're a little bit on the shorter side, I actually like to hold a little bit in the back because I, I, I don't want anything, my feet to be kicking into anything. So I want to take those longer strides and especially push my legs back behind me. How do you that. feel that that carries while you're in motion? Do you feel like it propels you forward a little bit? Yeah, it pull, pulls me forward a little bit because the weight's slightly shifted forward. Gotcha. It allows me to get that lean, and then I'm just catching up with the weights. Basically, as my body's falling, my feet are running under me trying to catch up. And Laz, when he was here, he, he was telling me that he prefers the opposite. If or he, he does prefer to grab down the center most more often than not, but if he had to pick, he would grab near the back so that or grab near the forward. The front, yes. Oh, no, so that is the same as you, right? Oh, okay, so no, I he would He would grab forward. Side, he grabs in the front. Because he wouldn't want the front to be digging into the ground. Oh, versus interesting, yeah. you like the... Yeah, I've done both, and yeah. both have served me well. Yeah, well, there, uh, lots of flavor to techniques, and whatever can work well for the individual at play, but it's uh, one of those things where you have to study the apparatus that you're lifting because length plays a big role here, too. Well, here we got Felix. I think he's... Final gonna, heat. He's going to be moving pretty fast as well. We know he has the grip strength, world record level grip strength, but Nick Best with that speed. Mark Felix in lane one, representing England. George Pearson, USA, lane two. Joey Grape, lane three, USA, and Eric Patterson. We're going to get a four. good time out of Felix, but I, d I doubt he'll be beating out uh, Nick's time, but still, we're going to get a good performance. Oh, <laughs> he, yeah. he is oh, just that, unfazed that by picking good. that. But oh wow, Felix and Pearson very close, neck and neck. I am surprised. Accelerate, Mark. There, here we go. And here we, here come the afterburners, and he takes it. Wow, beating out Pearson by Felix a few feet. versus Pearson. Look at this sportsmanship. I love it. They've These been guys doing this knew that they were so going to long, tell. and what kind of animosity can you hold when you're None. just battling it out with everything you got? You gotta love a good match like that. <laughs> They're all there fighting. <laughs> Joey Grape bowing to the farmer's walk in their intense magnitude. All right, so Nick Best was our current leader with 16.44 seconds. Proud of you, Nick. 16.13 oh, seconds. He beats Nick incredible Best. Incredible. By, by a third of a second. I was wrong. Barely, but I was wrong. Well, if there was anyone that was going to beat Nick Best on the Farmer's Walk, it would be Mark Felix. Who looks about the same age as he did 20 years ago. <laughs> He's probably going to look about the same 20 years from now, too. Yep. Still there at World's Strongest Man, beating us all at the grip events. His grip just keeps getting better, too. It does. It's, it's, it's that old man grip strength phenomenon. Like It just mm -hmm. ages like a fine wine. <laughs> better and stronger <laughs> as the years go by. <laughs> But that concludes our men's Masters 50-plus category. Mark Felix coming out on top, just inching over Nick Best's time of 16.44 seconds. And I believe... So this next group, we got 40-plus? Uh, uh, no, well, here, well, before we go on, here's our official scoring. Oh, here we go. So look at that, Martins. Top three. All within under half of a second from each other. Wow. 16.13 from Mark in first, 16.44 from Nick in second, and 16.56 by Pearson in third. And then we have Clark, Long, Troll, and Bevins all to still finish. Almost double the time of the, first, the top three. Those top three are different animals right there when it comes to this they're, event. They're still top shape in this event. That. <laughs> we, we would have to really bust our butts would to try to, to uh, beat that. Man. Yeah. That's something else. Flip that switch to beat these guys. That's really good time. 
These feats of strength are, are just just an example and an early sampling of everything that we're going to see here continues to transpire throughout the weekend at the official Strongman Games. All right. Up next. That is something to be very proud of. You know, the athlete who is chasing or vying for a world record eventually is never going to be satisfied with anything less than first place. So I can, I can imagine CJ once more, but he's got more events ahead. I and think he's you're, someone, you're someone that's pulled on a, an axle bar before. It is very different to a standard deadlift bar. Very different, and you need a, a lot of bit more power off the floor. You do with a, uh, an axle deadlift. You do, and your stance is not necessarily going to be the same on a barbell versus an axle. There's different type of explosive forces at play. There's flex to the bar. The moment when that bar, uh, when the weight finally leaves the ground is different depending on the load you have on there. There's, there's a lot of factors at play, but you, to become the supreme deadlifter, you need to be good at every bar from every height at any given rep range at any given time limit. I totally agree. And uh, I, I will say, Laws, I love the axle deadlift. You, I prefer it to the barbell, to be honest. It's Something a real about brute strength test. You can't yes. cheat an axle. Something about that supreme feeling of dead weight just feels, it feels right in this sport, <laughs> in this endeavor of chasing maximum strength. So we're getting ready for our first heat of the men's masters 50 plus division. Uh, it'll be a four man heat, a full heat in lane number one, Tatu Karhu of Finland, lane two, Isle Sharp of Canada, lane three, Woody Wood of USA, and lane number four, Brad Curl of Australia. 610 pounds on the axle. Karu is leaving it there. I think this might be a heat where we don't see a single rep. Curl is going to give it his all. We're going for a so raw. Wood is deadlift. going for the topless deadlift and strapless. I think going strapless on an axle is a mistake in competition. You know, maybe something was feeling off with his strap setup to where he's like, you know what, I just got to try this. And Do you know he what? He did, but it wasn't there. I'm not sure. You know, when you take that top off, you don't then put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. When you take that top off, you make the statement and you stick with it. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. not paying off there. But 610 pounds, this is certainly a very heavy weight. 610 on an axle is a very different beast than a 610 on a barbell. I love this camaraderie between the athletes here in that hug and slap of power. The Masters really are a fun group as well, just all enjoying it. So laid back behind the scenes. You don't see any sour attitude individuals. No, there they, they really isn't. They're never complaining. They're just happy to be here, getting on with it. Happy to still be lifting. Yeah. And Burwell is our first athlete to get a good rep in the over 50s. Joey falls, oh my goodness. I think he's okay. He's just going to have a nap. <laughs> Look at Joey doing the kickbacks. He's, he's a character. Oh, I love chatting to him and talking to him backstage. Just watching him is always fun. Yeah, I remember seeing Joey at the Southwest Regionals in Houston when he qualified for this. At the same back to shoulder event, you know, it was a serious ladder, just like they're going to face in the next event. He tried for the heaviest bag in the series, and it just wasn't going up. He wound up just putting it down, sitting at it, crossing his legs, and <laughs> waving at the crowd. Just such a funny individual, but yeah. has a great time doing this, this sport that he loves so much. You can see he so loves much. it. All right, our next heat, starting with Eric Schmidt in lane one, Mark Galloway lane two, Brian Strickland in lane three, and Sean Brooks in lane number four, all USA athletes. Let's see if we see some reps. So far, our leader is Burwell with only one rep, Andrew Burwell of Canada. Galloway just leaving 
knows this isn't his event. But Strickland, very solid there on his first rep. He looks like he's good for a few. A new leader, Brian Strickland. And he Two walks reps. away happy knowing he's taken the lead. Do you know what? I think he had another one in him as well. He may have, but... He's happy. Is, uh, Two reps. Puts him into the lead. Puts him into the lead. A long, I mean, it's been a long day. There's one more event ahead. And I guess you're going into the real athletes, if you like, in this group in our next two heats. That's right. We have, let's see, Steve Islas in lane number one, Eric Patterson in lane two, David Johns in lane three, and in lane number four, Lee Woody. All USA athletes again. So two repetitions is the marker. Patterson really gave it his all there, and we saw him strict pressing those Viking reps early on. But this is an example of, you know, the supreme presser not necessarily being grabbing, the best deadlifter. Grabbing an inside of his leg there. I would not be strapping up to the bar if there's a strain going on. But Johns, David Johns in lane number three, five reps already. Oh, Patterson was coming up. Five repetitions there by Johns. Clearly puts himself into the lead. We have some big deadlifts yet to come, but that's a solid performance when we compare to everything we've seen so far. I cannot see the likes of Nick Best and Mark Felix doing anything less than double figures, though. <laughs> uh, you know, at 610 pounds, I've lifted with both of them with a much heavier load, and uh, it still unfazes them, so... Quite I incredible think, that they are still so good. You know, Nick Best routinely does 20 rep sets around he, the 550 to 600 actually, range. This type of weight really suits Nick. He's not so much the best at a max deadlift, but a lighter deadlift for reps, Nick Best is unbelievable at. I love watching Nick Best do those crazy high rep sets when he, he posts them up on social media. That's, if you've ever done a 20 rep set of deadlifts, especially at a substantial weight, that is a different type of, a, oh. of gluteal burn. You, know? you feel that the next day. And your shorts don't fit the same way either. <laughs> For the better, I would say. All right, Chad Coyne, lane one. Mark Bevins, lane two. Dennis Bevins Troll, lane three. There. And Dennis Long. No Bevins. Okay, no Bevins. He is out, but Dennis Chad, Long. Chad a Coy, long way up. Smooth and slow. Gets the good, good rep. Troll is on to three. Long one rep for him. Now remember, Dennis Long is competing with a torn hamstring. And, and this is thing with a torn hamstring is not the one. Th this is an event where you need a hamstring. You know, you need two. You need two, two good ones. Ideally, you want two. Yeah. But even with one, Dennis Long can get a good rep. Troll trying to equal the lead of five reps, and he does. Wow. Shaky on the way up, but he just digging into that maximal exertion range right there and walking out, tying the leader. Yeah. And here comes our final heat. Lane number one, Andy Clark of England. Lane two, George Pearson, USA. Lane three, Nick Best, USA. Lane number four, Mark Felix, England. So Andy Clark is a very solid competitor, but this heat is all about Nick Best and Mark Felix. You know, watching these Masters athletes walk out onto the field and walk off the field, there's a lot of different types of walks going on. You know, very, very slow and stumbly, but when it comes time to flip that switch, the power comes out, and these guys just oh, operate. They're still strong. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, in the... And then some. Yeah. 610 pounds, five repetitions to score to beat. Looking at Best and Felix there on lane three and four, but Pearson and Clark have proven themselves to be powerhouses up to this point. Look at Mark. All four athletes look like they are going to go into the lead. <laughs> Nick moving a bit slower than I would have thought. Yeah, Nick, Nick has such an extremely narrow stance. What do you think of that stance? I mean, it works for him, but it works for him, I'd but it works over. better on barbells for him. You yeah. know, like we were just talking about, there have to be I minute mean, this changes. This is ridiculous by Mark Felix. He just doesn't even look like there's any weight in his arm. Ten reps already for Felix. Andy Clark going very well on the near side. And I've got to say, I'm surprised at Nick Best. I thought 
That's one, one thing we do have to say is Nick Best is coming back from a torn lat. He's struggling a little bit there. He's into a rhythm now, but no one is touching Mark Felix there. 12 repetitions, very easy win. Wow. For the Brits. No surprise. And, you know, Mark was sitting down there on the ground for, for quite a bit. He could have gotten easily another three-plus reps. Easily. Seven repetitions for Andy Clark. Seven repetitions also for George Pearson. Six for Nick Best and 12 for big Mark Felix. I think Nick Unfazed. has to be covering up a few injuries perhaps right now. I've seen Nick deadlift that kind of weight for huge reps before. So, after three events, Mark Felix extending his lead in the Masters class, over 50s. You see Mark there on the screen. I don't have any audio on him, but I can tell he's probably not even breathing that heavy. He, he, look at him just speaking he's so... He's not a normal human being. You know, like the rest of us, different. we get kind of, you know, lactic acid build up. You feel sore. Mark doesn't feel that. He just wakes up the next day, feels fine. You know, it's, it's incredible. I, I love every opportunity I get to compete alongside him because... When you're against that different caliber of an animal, you know, it, it, it really shows you and motivates you what pushing your own performance to the extreme limits of your own self can do. Mark, someone that I looked up to right from the start of my career, and I've been lucky to compete against Mark so many times, become great friends with him, and it's always a battle. You know it's always going to be a problem when you've got to do a farmer's walk, Atlas Stones. Any type of grip event, any type of deadlift, oh. he's just an exceptional competitor. You know, and he's, he's showing no signs of stopping. You know, getting close, closer and closer to 60. I mean, when, when in history was there a world's strongest man competitor in, the, in his 60s? I think the oldest competitor ever is Ode Haugen. Our men over 50 masters with Mark Felix, 69 points. Pulling ahead of George Pearson in second place with 65 and a half points. Nick Best in third with 59 and a half points. A bit of a spread between all three of those athletes. But between Best and Andy Clark in fourth, there is only a half a point difference. In fifth place is Dennis Troll, 55 and a half points. Chad Coy, 50 and a half points. And one full point behind Chad Coy is Lee Woody with 49.5. Andrew Bernal in eighth with 43. Steve Islas in ninth place with 42. And Eric Patterson in tenth place with 38 points. Shortly, but we move on to our men's Masters over 50 division. We have Tatu Karhu of Finland lane one, Giles Sharp Canada lane two, Woody Wood USA in lane three, and Brad Curl of Australia in lane number four. The same weight back series. And although these men will have more pounds on their frame in terms of body weight, they also have more mileage on the body in terms of age. Yeah, they won't move as smoothly and as quickly as some of the um, under 80 kilo athletes. But they have the size and the power. Look at Curl on lane number four. Shouldering the 275 oh, and... Can he balance? Yeah, he, he saved gets that well. Good recovery. Carhu on his way up with the third bag. And <laughs> just so close, Carhu almost got that. Maybe finished half a second too late. But you know, this is a world championship event. Our judges need to be very strict. All right, moving on to heat number two, a USA field. Tim Sowards, lane one. Thomas Coat, lane two. Eric Schmidt, lane three. And Mark Galloway, lane number four. Martins was a fan of Coat and his headwear yesterday. And you know, the really impressive thing about uh, Thomas Coat in lane number two, seemingly one of the smaller framed athletes, but that did not keep him from an astonishingly strong performance on the farmer's walk yesterday. Uh, he's a real gutsy athlete, you know. He's come to Strongman late. Just to be here in this World Championships is a huge, huge achievement for him. You can see, body weight wise, without question, the smallest athlete in the over 50 class. He's battled hard there, gets that first sandbag. Galloway moves on to the third bag. Look at Sowards there in lane number one. Just fighting that sh Oh, he goes down. There's a blood pressure spike that may have caused the lights to almost go out, but he is back up on his feet. Five seconds left. 
What a valiant effort from all these men. And again, seeing Thomas Coate there just wrestle with that big bag. Well over Thomas, his body weight, I would say. He's a great character. He is. I, I love seeing him. All right, I'm, I'm hearing from the MC on the microphone here in the arena that we're only going to have two athletes in heat number two. Heat lane number one is Sean Brooks of the USA, and lane number two will be Joey Grappy of the USA, and lane number two. Uh, Joey, I love watching him compete. He is such a fun character and loves <laughs> every minute of participating in this sport we also love. It's an interesting technique he's going for. It works. One motion. Look at that. I'm not sure he's going to be able to stick with that technique as the sandbags get longer. Well, he puts your words to the challenge, and he gets it on the 250. That's good. Look at him rushing to that next bag. Fierce. Come on, Come on. Joey. 275 to the lap. Brooks just taking his time, focusing on one bag as they come. 275, can he get up to, oh! And I think Joey's gonna take a little rest it's there. Not for the first time we've seen Joey on the floor this weekend. Wow, what an effort. Always smiling, always happy. And he was really good through those first two bags with a unique was. technique. A unique technique that caused the bag to wind up getting very far out in front of him just by the sheer length of the bag, but he made it work, and he did well. Yeah, it worked for him. But here we move on to heat number four. Dennis Long in lane one, USA. Steve Eastlas, USA lane two. Andrew Burwell, Canada in lane three. And Lee Woody, USA in lane four. I'm watching Dennis Long here. He has proven that even with a torn hamstring, he is an animal and ready to attack everything. The tallest athlete, it seems, on this heat. Long levers do work to the athlete's advantage on sandbags. Though it is a longer way up for the athlete, they have longer limbs to wrap around this massive, massive implement. Woody's the first athlete to complete the second sandbag in this heat. All three athletes on to the 275. All four athletes. Curl is still our current leader. Three bags in 35-12. He slices close to the shoulder. Ten seconds to get this bag up. Look at Woody. Oh. Dennis still trying. So no athletes in that heat managing the 275. Grueling, but look at our, our staff. Just so quick to reset the bags and keep the show moving fast. They really do a fantastic job. Heat number five, a USA field. Chad Corey, lane one. Brian Strickland, lane two. David Johns in lane three. And Dennis Troll in lane number four. Chad Coy, lane one, a true veteran to the sport. Someone I always relish every opportunity to talk to and pick his brain for knowledge and wisdom. But look at Troll in lane four, so quick to the shoulder. All four men get the down command on the first bag. Troll on to the 275. Troll looking very solid here, up to the lap. Look at that technique. He's got it. On the way, gets it. Troll onto the 300. Chad Coy falling just short of getting that 275. And Troll made it to that fourth bag, but like you said, that 300 pound bag is taller and it seems to be just a little bit less densely packed, resulting in a floppy and possibly shifting weight as the athletes maneuver it up their bodies. This is our final heat, Laws. The, the, the big powerhouses here. Who do we have? We've got Nick Best, legend of strongman. Andy Clark, competed in a number of these Masters competitions now. George Pearson from the USA, and the one and only Mark Felix. And if there's a man that's built to do this sandbag, it's Mark Felix. Ridiculous hand strength, very long arms, ridiculously strong back. He has all the tools. Has he practiced the technique? Let's see. 
Well, Mark competes very frequently, and I mean, it shows here with how fast he gets that back to the shoulder. Nick Best trailing right behind. Look out. I know Nick is feeling the, the wear and tear of yesterday, but he is answering Mark's call every step of the way. Clark, Clark has actually sneaked into second place here. He's doing really well. Mark Felix Mark. The, onto the final bag. Can Mark be the first over 40, over 50, sorry, to get Look at that. There we go. We knew he had all the tools to do this event well. Very clearly capable of giving his absolute best and everyone a run for their money. There is no weakness shown in Mark Felix on these really sandbags. Working hard. Can Andy Clark get this final sandbag? He's close. Yes, yes. he gets it just wow. in time. Incredible. I love those <laughs> nick of the moment finishes right there, right there. You can at the see buzzer. the cheeky smile on his face. He was so happy. And th th those moments feel like such a supreme victory. Even if Felix beat him on that fourth bag, he's going to carry that feeling of satisfaction all the way through the rest of the competition. And just to complete these events sometimes, that's a personal challenge as well. Oh, absolutely. Well, what a showing out of, out of Mark Felix there. <laughs> We've got Nick Best coming and talking to us, saying it's really hard with messed up ribs. He's he's definitely feeling some wear and tear on the on the old body right there. But you know, Nick Best is an absolute legend, and he is able to effectively tune out that pain and just kill whatever trial he has ahead of him. Incredible. We will be getting set up for our men's under 90 kilo class. We're losing the lightest bag and gaining a heavier bag at the very end. So now we are starting with 250 pounds. And finishing with 325. This over 50s class. Mark Felix is dominating that class. Only dropped one point out of a total possible 40. Look at that lead. George Parson is in second place with 32 and a half points. Andy Clark on 28. Then we've got Nick Best, 25 and a half. Dennis Troll on 24 and a half. And Lee Wood, 18. Chad Coy on 15. Andrew Burwell on 14 and a half. David Johns on 12 and a half. And Steve Islas on nine and a half points. Mark Felix really proving so far he is the dominant over 50 in the world. And that's why we see Mark Felix in so many big internationals still. And that's why we will continue to see Mark <laughs> Felix. I have not heard any rumors or rumblings of, any, of retiring anytime soon, and nor would I expect it with I can't, the strength he has shown. I can't showing. say for sure, but I have a feeling Mark is the oldest athlete competing. You know, it's amazing to, to think that when you look at him and you see the way he performs. Just incredible. Incredible, but unsurprising. And uh, he, he is on a blazing path to the top once again. Uh, the lead run early on, Krauser on 10.63 with the Scotsman McVie rounding out the top five, 11 dead. And I think it's uh, fair to say some uh, disappointment down the bottom for the likes of Hughes, Thompson and Tommy Lavelle, who was one of the big favorites, uh, but putting nine, in one of his uh, poorer performances. Nine of the 10 athletes finishing sub 15 seconds and another class where we see every athlete complete the course. And here we have our men's. We're not hanging about here. We're Let's on see. to the we next moving. category. And it, uh, it is, uh, I believe, the Masters there. Is that Chad Coy on the near side? All right, here we go. Chad Coy versus Andrew Burwell in our men's Masters 50-plus division. I remember seeing Chad Coy competing back in the 90s and then... Uh, had the pleasure of seeing him compete live at uh, the Super Series in uh, the early noughties. Still in great shape. Actually, the heaviest he's ever been, he told me, surprisingly. Used to compete at uh, around 270, 260, now uh, a full 280 pounds. Well, he is looking to, to make up some <laughs> points today. He, he is very proud to be into the finals, and the fight is not over. Chad Corey is raring for as high of a finish as he can get. Well, our Masters over 50, currently being led by Mark Felix with uh, the other Englishman, Andy Clark, putting in uh, some great performances yesterday. George uh, Pearson from Pennsylvania and Dennis Troll. They'll be going in the penultimate pair today. Uh, Nick Best of the USA, Las Vegas-based man against Lee Woody will be going in the middle pairing. And next up, it's going to be uh, David Johns against uh, Steve Eisler. And we 
are talking 317 and a half kilos. It's uh, the same weight that the open uh, or uh, open category in terms of age under 82 kilograms are competing with as uh, Isles just making the running here ahead of Johns. Looking stable and controlled, except he does go down at the end and leaves a window of opportunity for Johns to finish. But a fast recovery puts Islas across the course just ahead of Johns. <laughs> that was tortoise in there, wasn't it? That was a catching, just a bit. Catching all the while. Just a bit. But nonetheless, quite impressive. So we get a time for that first pair, Burwell and Coy? I have not seen time yet on screen. Everything we're dealing with, of course, is unofficial till the end. Um, I think probably the first pairing was a little bit quicker. It's uh, just my guess. The ones to watch for here, I think probably Andy Clark, Mark Felix, big George Pearson is uh, just a monster at the moment in great shape. And Nick Best, well, Nick Best on his day can beat just about anybody in a super yoke. Incredible. Gives him a huge advantage moving forward. We're getting ready for our next set of athletes in lane number one of heat <laughs> three. Lee Woody of the USA will be going against Nick Best. We're just getting set up. Let's see. So Nick Best on the very, uh, far side of camera there, just requesting a towel. No doubt uh, a little bit of sweat or something on the floor here. P probably coming from himself <laughs> more than <laughs> anybody. Maybe, but we want to make sure that Nick does not slip, or nor any athlete for this matter. He was uh, a little bit emotional earlier on after the sandbag. He, he just his words to me were he just couldn't understand how he he just couldn't get the power anymore, and he thought this may well be his final contest. And uh, there were a few tears out the back, uh, but he's uh, still got to finish the contest. And I certainly hope he finishes it in style. And if were it to be his retirement contest, and I sincerely hope it isn't, I hope that was just a. A, a, a rash statement earlier. Well, let's uh, let's just remember what a fabulous athlete Nick Best has been. A world strongest man finalist on more than one occasion. Fifth place, I believe, is best place off the top of my head. And uh, of course, he's also done particularly well in these uh, Masters competitions, winning uh, the over 40s before the over 50s ever came in uh, back in Doncaster some uh, seven years ago. But Nick Best certainly knows how to turn on that switch when it's go time. And the leader currently is Andrew Burwell with a time of 14.28 seconds. Let's see if Woody versus Best can give Burwell a run for his money. Best is off fast and we're seeing a newly kindled fire in Nick. He is going across the course without a single drop. We see a, tub, a sub 10 second run, I dare say, out of Nick Best. I think maybe sub six seconds, that was outrageous. There's a smile <laughs> I wanted to see. All of those uh, negative emotions, if you will, at the start of the day seem to have just blown away from Nick's mind. He's, he is happy and cheerful. And Woody, giving it his best to get every inch of distance possible. It is a- Looking a bit more mortal here. That was a bit more mortal. Nick just showing us he's still got plenty of fire burning. Yeah, he can he, never be counted out. Yeah, he wore the, the car as a, as a cloak and just jogged off the line there. That was quite extraordinary. You know, Colin, uh, as promising and as huge of a lead as Mark Felix has, he is going to have to be very fast to overcome Nick's time. And, and it's not an unassailable lead either, that's for sure. Nick Best uh, is still in with a shower. If he can put in a couple of big performances in these uh, final Best, couple of events. 7.65 seconds for our... Fastest yoke run of the day, I believe. Incredible. Incredible. He's walking out the field without a limp, with a big smile. He's happy. And I love to see it because he was in a different frame of mind earlier today. And just look at the speed. Running with 700 pounds. I, I think uh, we almost had uh, two feet off the ground there at one point. <laughs> if this was a race walk race, he would have been busted there for <laughs> Colin. That replay looked like it was sped up, but that was actually full real time speed there. <laughs> it was impressive, wasn't it? Insane. Now, well, maybe the retirement talk is going to be put on hold for a while. We'll I wait. hope so. <laughs> I don't think we we're anywhere close to that, to be honest. But you can never know what's going on in someone else's mind and body. So, always hoping for the best for our friend 
Mr. Nick Best himself. George Pearson on the left-hand side. And keen Dennis to get Troll. in. Dennis Troll, the man getting into the car. Some great performances throughout yesterday and earlier today by both these men. George Pearson, the man who uh, helped get Evan Singleton in the strongman, teach him a, a lot of his uh, early training. And, so uh, can we call him the grandfather T-Rex? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that an appropriate title for an over 50 athlete? Um, well, yeah. I, I, think, I think the T-Rex thing Look is entirely single. Go. go on then, George Pearson. Wow, he is fighting to match best time. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's going to be a literal run for Nick's money right there. I don't think it was quite as fast, but... It didn't look quite as wild. Uh, but it may then still again, be sub nine seconds. It might be as fast. You never know. Sometimes the look of it isn't... Uh, Enough to go on. I think you're probably right. Around the nine-second mark would, would make sense. I think George Pearson just... 8.25 seconds. Still blitzing fast on the course, but Nick Best untouchable up to this point. But here we have our final heat up next. In lane number one will be Andy Clark of England and another Englishman, the man himself, Mark Felix, facing the 700-pound car. Vying for that top spot again, Nick's best time of 7.65 seconds. No pressure. Mark Felix hasn't uh, got the kilt on. I used to love when Mark wore that contest kilt. But, uh, he's certainly up for business today, leading this over 50 category. He you know, looks a little nervous, actually. Well, following a time of 7.65 seconds as a current leader, he needs to uh, he needs to apply the pressure in the heat. Big Andy Clark enters the other car. He will be uh, closest to camera in just a second when we see the wide shot. Mark running. He needs to stay up. Any drop is costly. Wow. Strong. That was very close, you know. That oh. was absolutely perfect efficiency by Mark Felix. I don't think I've seen him do a better super yoke. Certainly, uh, it's going to be in the territory, if not Nick Best, perhaps George Pearson territory, around the eight, eight and a half second mark. 7.69 for Mark Felix, oh. 0 0.04 away from catching up to Nick Best. But Nick Best, our event leader on this car walk today. And check out the sportsmanship. Here we have Best and Felix shaking their hands and going in for a hug. I love to see it. What a great, tremendous run, neck and neck by these two. So then Mark Felix manages to claim second spot in the Masters 50 plus car walk. Nick Best takes uh, maximum points and uh, perhaps puts uh, the retirement thought back in the box for a little bit longer. The slow-mo replay of Felix right here. Look at this. Even in slow motion, seems to be moving fast. Supreme control. You can see the frame of the car bouncing under his tremendous power. 7.69 seconds from Mark Felix on the 700-pound car. So there is our uh, top 10 as we look at the men's over 50 category uh, as it's uh, completed. Nick Best with a tremendous time by just four hundredths of a second beating Mark Felix into second place. George Pearson is in third, rounding out the top three. Andy Clark of England just ahead of Dennis Troll. And uh, further on down, Chad Coy, one of the big names or particularly short names in the category, but a big name and strong one, that's for sure. 18.2 uh, seconds. I think he'd be pretty pleased with that. He wanted to make the top 10, and uh, he's doing a whole lot better than that. Lee Woody, 21 feet, 8 inches, the only man not to complete the course. And we will move on to the next category as our very slick crew 
are doing a tremendous job of preparing these cars. Mark Felix, therefore, is seven and a half points ahead of uh, George Pearson, who sits five points ahead of Nick Best. Uh, that's your top three. Andy Clark and Dennis Troll are uh, behind on 30.5. And actually, it's quite the gap from uh, Troll down to Burwell on 19 and a half. This is becoming really a five-horse race, but uh, in reality... It's a four-horse race for second place, I would guess, with Mark Felix starting to look like he's uh, going to become the champion in the over-50s. Uh, anything can happen with two events left. ...capable of competing and winning at this level. France is definitely going to be proud of their own Benjamin Donnan right there. Woody versus Johns in this first heat of our men's Masters over-50 class. Both USA athletes... We are using the same weight series. Woody using that same technique as Tommy Lavelle, where he rests the dumbbell against the side of his head. The advantage of this technique is you can keep the dumbbell so much higher, you shorten that range of motion. But you have to be really careful with how far you dip down so that dumbbell doesn't start You've drifting. You've got to make sure it doesn't back. get away from you as well. Yeah. People have a tendency to push it away from their body. You need to get underneath. Woody, quite gassed as he gets this 160-pound monster bell. Waves to the crowd, knows he left a great effort. Our next heat will be Steve Islas and Chad Coy, both USA athletes. Chad first into the arena right there on the right side of the screen. And Stevie Sluss to the left. Chad been around the sport for so, so long. Chad's posture there, so picture perfect, a well-established sense of where his center of gravity lies. Alternating shoulders. I haven't seen too much of that today. No, and for a Masters athlete, it's great to see both shoulders healthy enough to do so. Yeah. Chad onto the 160. Chad is sticking with the left arm on this one. Nice. Wow, that arm Very locked good. out like a piston. He was really explosive there. Chad Come on, Coy, Chad. 180 pounds, and he knows where his limit <laughs> is. That 160 moved really well. I love how snappy that lockout was. And the, the interesting thing, he wasn't that snappy on the first two. No, he looked no. Like Sometimes as a master, you lose that explosive ability, and often your joints are a little bit, there's more wear and tear, your muscles aren't quite as supple as they were when you're younger, so you can't really be as explosive all the time. And he knows his body well. He knew he could get through the first two with minimal energy expenditure. I think he appreciated the 160 was going to be more challenging, and that was where he had to hit the gas and really apply that power, and he did it perfectly. Really woke the systems up for that one, and it shows. Understanding your body well, and it's something Chad really knows. Good coach, and understands movements and mechanics really well. Heat number three, Andrew Burwell of Canada in lane one, and Dennis Troll of the USA in lane number two. Wow, Troll trying to strict press, that. press that. We need some Ooh. more leg power there. I was saying with Colin on earlier, it's great to see someone strict press it, but you don't get extra points for it. Yeah, yeah. Troll really muscles through that last one. This 160 is going to prove to be one heck of a match. I think he's going to have to use some leg drive to get this. I can't see him strict pressing 160. But I might be wrong. Look at this. He's fighting. Oof. That was a good effort. Those triceps are under some immense tension there for a while. Yeah. But 
Both men giving it a great effort. We have heat number four up next, Andy Clark of England in lane one, and George Pearson of the USA in lane number two. If memory serves me correctly, George was very good in the Viking press. What a big framed man he is. And the same can be said about Andy Clark there. Yeah, Clark's a powerhouse. Lots of muscle on that body. You can see the size of those upper backs, ready to fortify the shelf of the shoulder for each of these monster bells. Easy press there for Pearson. Just a little slower going through the movement. And Andy is on to the third dumbbell. Oh. Pearson there on lane two has to return his dumbbell back to his platform before he can move on I'm to the not, next. I'm not so sure about this technique by Andy Clark here. He's not really a press. He's almost kind of two-handed snatching it into a locked-out position. Well, the referees is. let him get away with it, but I'm not so sure about that. Like, the understanding from the rules is that you could one-handed snatch from the floor, but he's using both hands. I'm not the referee, so. I what do you don't think know about what's that? Going on there. I don't That's think. My opinion is that shouldn't be allowed. But no, that should not be allowed. That's. I mean, that, that takes away from what this event the is supposed to be. of this event. It should be a one-arm press. But you know, if he's getting the down commands, then. All right, our final heat, heat number five will come down between two legends in the sport, Mark Felix of England and Nick Best of the USA. This is going to be a match to watch, folks. Now, Felix, not necessarily known for his overhead pressing strength, but he has shown that he is in peak and prime condition. I'll right tell you here. one thing with Mark, though. If he's going to pick an overhead, it's going to be the dumbbell. He prefers dumbbell to most overhead events. Why do you think that is, Laws? Um. <laughs> See Best right there, utilizing the same technique. Yeah, this is... Okay. Look how high Nick Best has that dumbbell. Both men advance to the third in unison. Mark using a more traditional style and a very good press there. Felix looking strong. He can do this. Come on, Felix. Yes! Felix. Mark Felix. And he deserves that one. I like the technique. Good to see Mark Felix doing well on an overhead event there. Love it. Nick Best, unbelievable on the car walk. Nick Best gets the third dumbbell, moving on to the fourth and final, but showing a lot of signs of fatigue. Nick is struggling with injuries. He's feeling legs. a lot of pain. He's got some sore ribs. He's come back from a torn lat. Needs to be careful. The elbow oh. there, he grabs straight away. Such a warrior, someone that has inspired so many people in the strength world. But this event this year is all about Mark Felix. I think Nick might have just hyperextended his arm a little bit. Hopefully it's nothing more than a, a strain. But Mark Felix, the only athlete to complete all four dumbbells in a time of 28.28 seconds. Mark is in peak form. Mark he, looking he looks fantastic. Good. Right. Up next, we'll move on to our men's under 90 kilo class. We are going to up the weight of this series. 140, 160, 180, and 200 pound dumbbells lie in store for our athletes. 63 and a half, 72 and a half, 81 and a half, and 91 kilograms, respectively. Here are men's over 50 standings. Again, with Mark Felix, the only athlete with all four dumbbells in 28.28 seconds. Andy Clark, three dumbbells. 29.27. Chad Coy, three dumbbells, 39.27. Narrowly edging out Nick Best with three dumbbells in 40.19. All the other athletes only managing two of the dumbbells in the series. Overall standings puts Mark in an impressive lead over Andy Clark 
by a whopping 14 points. 58 points for Mark, 44 points for Andy Clark, and only half a point lead over George Pearson. So Mark Felix has already won. He is our Masters <laughs> champion. He has got an unassailable lead, so but we still have a real battle for second and third place between... So Mark could really not do anything on this class with David Johns of the USA in lane one and Steve Eastlas of the USA in lane number two. These gentlemen put it all out on the field, showing that age is, in fact, just a number. The same weight series as our previous category, 225 to 350 pounds. Ooh, a fumble from Jones on that first stone, getting a little too ahead of himself. Much, much better, much cleaner. Now both men are tied for points at, at this point in the contest. Literally a match against each other. Who will come out ranked higher? John's pulling ahead with three stones to tower. Here's the 300 for John's. And he recovers and, he and gets, gets it over. It. Awesome recovery. You don't see that too often. Eastlas just in the nick just of time, I believe, getting three stone. stones. But David Johns will come out on top of Steve Eastlas. Both men went tied into this event. We'll see where the points lie with all the other competitors. Heat number two will be Lee Woody in lane one of the USA and Andrew Burwell in lane two of Canada. Another amazing recovery. Look at that. First stone. Fumbles by both men and then saved again by both men. Now, I mean, what's your footwear of choice for out of stone runs? Uh, honestly, I like a little bit of lift in my shoes. It gives me a little bit of extra health and help, help and advantage with my height. I like to wear lifted sneakers. Basketball shoes. I see some athletes opting for very soft-soled shoes here almost acting like a bit of a dampener with the power they apply on the stones. But you also see athletes wearing Olympic weightlifting shoes with the raised heel possibly giving them a bit of an advantage on that triple extension that you mentioned. It is all a matter of preference. Absolutely. Personally, I like a nice, solid, and flat-footed shoe, but that's just me, and we all have so our own strengths. So it's safe to say you like it hard. <laughs> Evan, let's keep it PG here, You please. left it open. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Woody versus Burwell. Lane number one, Woody is off. Oh, with a one motion. His shirt sticking to the stone a little bit, but moves on to the second stone, the 250. He is a strong stone loader. This is Lee Woody, left of screen of the USA. 275 very is up for good Woody. Triple extension. Very, very nice pop onto that platform. Burwell right behind him. Both men advance to the 300. Woody onto that fifth stone. Now, if he gets this, he will be the event leader following Johns with a four stone run in 52.28 seconds. Our new event leader, Lee Woody. Five stones to tower. Can he get that last stone? Wasting a bit too much time there, but he still walks out of here. The second heat as our current leader in the men's over 50 Atlas stones. But the pressure is on. Heat three. Chad Coy in lane one and Dennis Troll in lane number two. Both USA athletes and Chad Coy, someone you and I have both had the pleasure of getting to be imparted knowledge by. A Absolutely. true veteran to the sport. A very tough judge. Absolutely. At both <laughs> of these past Shaw classics. <laughs> now, it's good to see Chad Coy on the receiving end of some tough judging calls. I got to talk to him in, during one of the breaks and he made the joke that one of us must have paid the judge to be a little bit strict <laughs> as a return of karma for all those long holds he had us do at the Shaw Classic. But it's good to see Chad in action. 
moving well, moving strong. He's inspecting every stone, making sure it's to his liking. A seasoned athlete with many, many years of experience and mileage in strongman. Absolutely, absolutely. It's awesome just to see him coming out here. He's taking part in refing. He's taking part in behind-the-scenes action with uh, a lot of the pro shows, but he's also coming out here, and he's giving it, his, giving it his all on the competition ground himself. It's awesome to see. Koi versus Troll. Both men looking good. Strong first stone. Strong second stone. Chad has some very strong hip and leg strength. I routinely see him do massive squats. Absolutely. Every week in his training. Ooh, just a bit shy there. Just a bit Troll shy. Troll might pull ahead here on this 300 pounder. Ten seconds left. Every stone counts. Chad needs to move. And both men fall short. Our leader remains Lee Woody with a five stone series. Successfully to tower. Our next heat. Heat number four will be Nick Best in lane one and George Pearson in lane number two. Both Americans. It's a fun fact. George Pearson is actually the reason why I'm in Strongman in the first place. That's what I heard. I, I made the uh, I gave him the unofficial title of being Grandfather T Rex. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that made his his. Uh, I'm, I'm just sure that lit up his entire face. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is good to see his knowledge has resulted in a truly gifted World's Strongest Man competitor and, as much as I hate to say it, a brother in strength who uh, I truly love. Uh, you love But me. don't let that ego get too big too or that late. head too swollen. Too late. My hat is already starting to really not fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is up against a match here with Nick uh, Best, Nick although Nick Best, the living this morning himself. was telling me he was feeling some, some pain all across the body. He was not sure how he was going to reach down and grab the sandbags this morning. But he did well, surprised himself. And I'm sure he will do the same here on these Atlas Stones. Nick inspecting his tower. Making sure everything is in place and ready to go. Best versus Pearson. All right, gentlemen, let's put on a show. Will we see that sixth, sixth stone finally lifted? Only one point between these two athletes. This is a fight for the podium. Ready. Strong stone. Nick already onto that third stone, pulling Nick ahead of George. Nick moving fast. This is a fast run. Nick is looking good. Nick is looking really strong. Pearson, onto that right fifth behind. Stone. Nick onto the 325. Easy for Nick Best. 300 onto the 350 pounds. Pearson right behind with the 300. It's there. Nick. Nick is our first, first athlete to complete all six stones. He completes the six stone tower. Look at that smile. And right on to Kachir on his competitor, George Pearson, going again for that sixth stone, and he will get it. Both men completing the full sixth stone tower here at the official Strongman Games. Nick Best, I know this meant a lot for him. I see him oh running. Oh, boy, where's Nick you, you running You don't usually see Nick running. What, what's he doing? Oh, no. I think I know what this is. I know what this is. Oh, let's... uh. Are we able to get? Are we able to get him a microphone? Are we able to get audio of Nick? I have a feeling this is something we might want to hear. Any possibility for audio on Nick Best? Nick Best putting his competitive shoes on the floor. 
Nick Best. Announcing his retirement. A symbol. Here we are. We're going to tune out and listen to Nick here. Absolutely. symbol of a legend coming to only a fraction of a pause but Nick Best hanging up the shoes announcing his official retirement from strongman as much as it pains us to hear just lots of love for Nick Best an inspiration for so many athletes myself included I remember my first world strongest man and you were actually there yes he took time out of his day late at night after the food has already been eaten. Everybody's retired to the rooms and he sat down with all of us new guys, first year at World's Strongest Man to give us motivation and advice. Nick Love Best, that a mentor, an inspiration, a role model, and a true legend in the sport, finishing the six stone run in true epic fashion. An amazing chapter in Strongman coming to a close, but we know in some shape or form, we will see Nick Best continue to stay in the realm of strength. Absolutely. And here we have Mark Felix versus Andy Clark. Mark is off to the races, needing to beat Nick Best time of 38.22 seconds. And honestly, Mark, Mark doesn't need to do anything. No, he does not. He doesn't even need to do this run. He has enough of a lead to not have to do anything at all, but he is Mark Felix. He will not miss an opportunity to do a stone run at a world championship event. Clark right behind him. But Felix, a full stone ahead, Absolutely. onto the 350. Strong, powerful, the world champion in the over 50 category, Mark, the miracle man, Felix. Felix shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. He may very well be competing at World's Strongest Man when our children are. Absolutely. Clark on the 350, just shy. Just barely. An incredible run by Felix. Very well conditioned from all of the Giants live Castle Stone runs he has done. Look at that, our first place finish. Didn't need to do it, but he did. 33.08 seconds for Mr. Mark Felix. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And once again, Nick Best announcing his official retirement from Strongman here at the 22, 2022 official Strongman Games. Yeah. Finishing a six stone run in epic fashion. I'm going to go give Nick a hug real quick because he looks like he needs it. I will be right back. Tell him I'm coming for him after. We are going to verify some scores before we get them posted, but... Wow, you know, it really came down to some intense, intense stone loads there with the second half of our men's masters over 50 class. 
we are getting set for our men's under 90 category. Oh, and here we have our scores. Mark Felix with a whopping lead in first place, 68 points, the strongest man in the world over 50. And in second place, a tie, Nick Best and George Pearson. However, whoever does better on the Atlas Stones with a faster time will break the tie, and that is Nick Best himself. Nick Best, second place at the OSG 2022 World Championships. George Pearson in third place, tying best for points, but a slightly slower stone time with 51 and a half points and only half a point behind Pearson, just missing that podium. Andy Clark with 51 points and quite a way ahead of the rest of the pack. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing and a great way to finish out the 50 plus men. It really is. On to our men's under 90 kilo class. These stones will raise. Next year we'll get you the official Strongman Games walkers with the tennis balls on the bottom of them. You can scoot out. I'll do it with my microphone on. I, I said I will announce and compete at the same time. All right, in 10th place for the Masters Strongest 50 plus in the world, the award goes to Steve Islas. In ninth place from the United States, it's David Johns. In eighth place from Canada, it's Andrew Burwell. In seventh place from the USA, it's Lee Woody. In sixth place, Chad Coy. It's, I just want, Chad, you can hear me, right? Chad Coy? Okay. I'll mail you a cheesecake, I promise. Tell these guys the story sometime. Or are you too old to remember? Yeah. We'll come back to that at the after party. Sorry, I don't want to hold the awards anymore. All right. Dennis Troll in fifth place from the United States. In fourth place, representing England, it's Andy Clark. On to the podium we go in third place this year, representing the U.S. of A, it's George Pearson. In second place, getting to wave one more time to this wonderful crowd from the United States, Nick Best. And this year's Masters 50 plus champion with a landslide victory, the man, the myth, the legend, England's Mark Felix. All right, buddy system, guys. Everyone hold hands on the way out. I don't want anyone to get lost. Make sure you check in when you get back to your hotel room so we know everyone's safe. You 90 men, come on down. Ninety kilogram men. I know we send you down two at a time and four at a time, but just one more time, we're going to send you ten at a time. 
It was Willie Nelson that said, last night I came home at 2 with a 10, but at 10 I woke up with a 2.